Good afternoon, this is Brian Shannon from Alpha Trends Blogspot. It's Wednesday, September 20th, 2006. We had the Federal Reserve meet today, and uh, no surprise there from uh, what they said. I think the biggest surprise came from the market in the way it gapped higher this morning. Uh, I've got the S&P 500 on the screen right now. Let's take a look at the 10-minute time frame. The, the surprise, again, came from the market gapping higher this morning, uh, following through a little bit, and then we had a, a little bit of a sell-off on the on the Fed announcement. And now let's go down to a five-minute time frame to get a little bit better handle. So we saw new highs up there, and these highs were 132.77. The old intraday high for the year was 132.80 for the S&P 500. So it didn't make that. Um, we did have big volume here on this sell-off, and I think it's just, I think it's probably too early to call it a victory for the bulls today. I think that these Federal Reserve announcements usually take a day or two to kind of settle in and, and see how the effects are going to be felt um, by the market overall. As far as the trend goes, obviously we've still got a great uptrend here in the S&P 500. It's approaching the target that we've been looking at for uh, you know better part of two months now based on this inverted head and shoulders pattern. And that gave us a, a target back here from early August up towards the 133 to 133 and a half. So as I've been saying, I think that we're still at a pretty critical juncture for the market. Um, you know, bad new or good news usually comes out near tops. I'm not saying that I'm not calling it top by any means, but we have to keep one eye kind of suspicious on this market in the fact that we've had such a nice rally and now we're getting bullish reasons for it up here. So, um, you know, with the declining oil and that sort of thing. Now, looking at the NASDAQ 100, um, market put in another, you know, good day here, closed back above that rising to or, or I'm sorry, declining 200 day moving average. And, you know, looks like it's heading more towards maybe uh, these lows here. We could see, you know, maybe continued move up to 41 and a half. But on the weekly time frame, I've got to point out once again that we've got this real mixed picture in here. And that's why we have to kind of look at, at things a little bit more cautiously and, and remember that we remain in a stock picker's environment. And there's risk in the market. And if you're going to trade stocks based on anything that I say, Read this disclaimer here because it says basically, I don't want to hear you whining about it. You take responsibility for your own actions, and we can move forward from here. Once you, uh, if you, if you don't wish, if you don't agree with my disclaimer here, then turn this video off now. Back to the people who are serious about making money in the market, we can continue to look at this Nasdaq 100 and see here on the 10-minute time frame. Uh, or maybe not, that we put in, you know, the, the five-day moving average continues to rise. The biggest concern that I have on for the market right now came from the lack of follow-through in the semiconductors today, the, the SMH. The semiconductor holders, as you know, I, I look to the semis a lot of times for leadership for the overall market. And this group didn't participate in the upside. It was, a, you know, up slightly, but it wasn't really able to convincingly get above the support from last week that's been acting as resistance here. Now this five-day moving average is turning lower. I think if the semiconductors take out today's lows near 34, um, then I think we're going to see exaggerated selling in the uh, or continued selling in the semiconductors and probably bring us back down towards this 33 and a half level. If that were to happen, I think that, uh, you know, it's still an uptrend as long as we hold up above here and maybe we'll get a test of the 50 day moving average. I, I, I don't know. I, as I said about a week ago, I'm kind of expecting uh, more sideways choppy action than anything overall, even though we continue to remain in an uptrend. And that's why, again, it's very important that we have the right stock ideas. So uh, keep your eye on these semiconductors tomorrow. A breakdown in here could lead to further weakness, obviously, in the semiconductors. I think that would, in turn, affect the NASDAQ 100, and that would also affect the SPY, the uh, S&P 500, as well as the Russell 2000, the IWM, which had a you know very nice day in here today you know, closing back above uh, this prior high right here and putting the June 2nd highs within striking distance. So, you know, looking purely objectively at this market, it's making higher highs and higher lows. Um, but, you know, looking at the weekly time frame, uh, we're coming up to this prior level of support, which did act as resistance. Maybe it will again. Uh, just continue to take it slow. Um, I think it's going to take a day or two for the uh, uh, the, re 
the Federal Reserve announcement to kind of really settle into the market. That's usually what happens is it takes, you know, two to three days before we really get a direction uh, for, for what's going to happen in here. So let's go ahead and take a look at some of the stocks I've been mentioning. First of all, RFIL. Here's a stock that I had mentioned um, I think two days ago, saying that it looked like it was still early in here. I was I was thinking that I would probably buy the stock above eight dollars a share today. It didn't get above that eight dollar level. I still think that's probably you know back above seven ninety five or so is where I would consider buying this stock and maybe even tightening my stop up a little bit to just uh, about seven and a half. But I think that you could see it at least you know test these highs near nine nine and a half. And you know on the weekly time frame, daily time frame, I think that we could potentially see it go even higher. But to risk 50 cents in here for the potential of about $1.50, obviously that's a one to three risk reward ratio. Um, the next stock we're gonna look at was one that I've been mentioning for the past couple days as well that was very similar to that in that it moved up on massive volume, broke out kind of this coma here that the stock had been in for um, you know the last you know few, three or four months in here just kind of woke up on a really huge volume and it's been finding support near that uh, retracement level that I pointed out yesterday two-thirds retracement as well as the rising 10-day moving average what I was looking for in here was an initial pullback I'd suggest that had you bought it yesterday you got to sell it on a little strength because this longer term moving average was still heading lower I thought it was gonna settle back down towards seven dollars a share it didn't get quite get there and I thought maybe in the afternoon it would be a good purchase candidate and I think that was probably a good place Place to purchase this stock at about seven dollars and forty cents if you're in this stock I think your stop goes just below the seven dollar level and I would be looking for a move back up towards that 875 to nine dollar level uh, looks like um, looks like it's set up for a nice move here ACLS um, this stock most of the longs I had mentioned last night I was looking for an initial pullback and unfortunately because we got that gap higher in the market um, these were not be able, they were they weren't able to be entered uh, based on the parameters that I laid out. But again, you know, you got to make these ideas your own and decide whether the risk reward is suitable for you and determine where to get in. What I was looking for was a pullback in here uh, and then to buy it on strength. Obviously, that never occurred, so I'm not going to continue to update that one. ATVI Activision, same thing here. I was looking for a little bit of uh, a pullback uh, in Activision. The pullback never occurred. The stock made a good move. Um, I'm not going to continue to update it. However, if you are along the stock, I would say your stock probably goes maybe about $14.45 is where I would uh, definitely probably uh, put it. Definitely, probably. Um, Fossil, F-O-S-L. Um, this stock... Um, same thing here. I was looking for, I had laid out two different uh, entry parameters. One was, the one that I preferred was a pullback and then a rally past the high of the last couple of days at uh, 55 cents. Or secondly, what I was looking for was a rally up to that 55 cent level. Uh, was it 55 cents? Maybe 53 cents. Um, but the way I outlined it was I wanted to see it run up there, then pull back, and then break out then we could put our stop below here so again I'm gonna say officially no entry on that stock had you gotten involved in it nice move uh, at this point I would say I would probably put my stop right around twenty dollars and eighty five cents or so and um, let's see HPOL was another one I had mentioned the stock looked good yesterday kinda broke out and then pulled back I said above six dollars and twenty cents were is where I would consider purchasing it we had that move occur I was gonna then put my stop at about six dollars and ten cents I think your stop can remain at six dollars and ten cents the stock still looks good I think for a move up to about six dollars and sixty cents as far as shorts I had mentioned yesterday we were looking uh, for the third time I think maybe even this week or maybe in the last four days at a short of Aspen technology symbol AZPN the way I suggested that I would probably uh, play this was on a move below 1105 that obviously you can see never occurred here so there was no reason to get involved in AZPN and finally I had uh, Garmin mentioned as a potential short sale candidate what I was looking for there was an initial rally up to 4350 we got that and then to sell it short below forty three dollars and twenty cents 
That also occurred, and the stock looked like maybe it was going to do something for a little while. It couldn't crack below this yesterday afternoon's lows, and the buyers came back in and took control here quickly of the stock. I had suggested and mentioned that I was probably going to put a stop around 43.55 putting my maximum risk at about 35 cents. So that stock, uh, had you decided to get in, should have been stopped out for a small loss. And, you know, less than 1%, you know, about three quarters of a percent on this stock. So uh, as a percentage of overall portfolio, if you're, you know, saying, let's say you're putting 20% uh, of your stock, your, your, your equity in, into one idea, then, you know, maybe you lost about uh, 18 basis points. So a very small amount of risk overall. And that's going to do it for now. Go ahead and read this disclaimer. And uh, I think that uh, I'm going to start putting this disclaimer up every day. And uh, basically, if it looks familiar, it's uh, based on the one that uh, Jim Cramer uses. I just kind of substituted my name and all that stuff in there. Figured they got good lawyers, and they probably uh, found a good disclaimer. So here it is, and I will be back this evening with another video. Uh, thanks for your time.